uh, test program in debug mode. Currently, we're here. We're creating uh, M1 AIT model. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. It just creates the model. It gives it to us. So the next step, what we need to do is we need to name parameter tensors. What it means that your model, it has parameters. And then each parameter internally, it has associated tensor, which basically describes uh, the data. It doesn't have the data itself. And uh, this method is trying to give names to the tensors. So for each param, we take a corresponding tensor and uh, there is a dictionary authors uh, and we just give a name. And so the way it works, uh, so the name of the parameter will be something like uh, FC0, which is fully connected zero, then dot weights or biases, and then we replace dot with underscore. Uh, I think it's for C++ mostly. Um, so now if I, print that parameters, uh, that's what I have, FC0 weights and biases, okay? Uh, what's next? Now I need to define my input shape. Uh, AI template, it supports uh, dynamic shapes. Um, so they have two classes for that. Uh, int var, it uh, represents dynamic dimensions. And you can supply values. It actually uh, supports only two values, uh, lower and upper. Uh, so I'm going to use batch size from one to eight, and the second dimension will be fixed one. So this uh, this class int immutable, it represents fixed dimensions. It's just going to be three. Uh, and I'm going to create my input tensor. So it's just a description of the data. It has shape, name, and the flag is input. And the next uh, step is to get it through the model, kind of trace it through the model to get the output tensor. Uh, we can try to do it in debug mode. Um, so, see, like I got into forward method of my model, and now I'm going to call this FC0 layer. Um, let's actually get other. Um, yes. And so now I got inside linear forward. And so the input argument is just my X. And what it's doing is preparing the actual inputs, which is going to be my input plus the weights uh, of that uh, linear layer. And once we have these two inputs, we also check if we use biases. And yes, we use it. So we add the third tensor, which is biases. And now we're going to feed it to our operator. Let's see. So this is my operator. Oh, by the way, the path to the operator is here. It's inside compiler ops, gem universal. We have that gem uh, RCR bias. Uh, let me show you the hierarchy of that. Um, so we have node, operator, gem, gem RCR, and gem RCR bias. That's the mm, hierarchy of that class. All right. So now I'm inside the call method of gem RCR bias. So it takes A and B and bias, right? So it's X, weights, and bias. have input attributes. Uh, we're doing sanity check for A and B. Then we're doing infer shape. So internally, this infer shape is doing some validation again, and then it calls super infer shape. And now we switch to the base class, uh, not base, I mean, super class gem RCR. And the output shape is going to be A minus one shape and B uh, dimension zero shape. So we combine it, that's our output shape. Uh, so some additional stuff, and now we create output tensor. So we now know the output shape from infer shape. We say that my source operator is me, which is uh, RCR bias gem, and D type is similar to X D type, which is float 16. 
uh, some additional stuff, and we're actually done with this uh, tracing almost. So we're returning from module from my class forward. And now we have Y tensor, which basically says that if we feed X tensor through the model, we're going to get Y tensor with a particular shape. Uh, let me see what it says. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the shape of it is from one to eight for beige and the second dimension is three. Also, I'm going to mark, to, to mark the tensor with name Y and I'm going to give it its output uh, flag. It's, it's internal flags that's needed for the compiler. So it supports is output, is input, and is param flags. So we're done with tracing the model. Uh, so now I'm going to detect the target. So this target is going to be CUDA. And the architecture is 7.5. Also, I have particular compile options uh, for that particular uh, architecture type. Let me see what we have here. Yeah. Target type is one, which is CUDA architecture 75. Uh, now I'm going to prepare for the compilation. I can specify particular debug settings. Uh, so it supports some options which you might want to use during the compilation. So I'm going to use this one is dump AT to PY. It will dumps the AIT model to the Python program. And then gen standalone, it will generate a standalone application which runs the model with the uh, random inputs. It's mostly, I guess, for performance investigation. Uh, okay. So I give the name of the program and I set standalone true. Now uh, I want to generate some dummy weights and biases. Usually we take these weights and biases from the PyTorch pre-trained model. Uh, so, but in that case, I'm just going to use some dummy inputs. Uh, so I create this dummy inputs. It's just uh, 0 0.1s. Uh, so to compile the model, I'm going to give my output tensor. That's what it's needed. Target, uh, place where I want to save my model. So the folder, subfolder, and, uh, and the shared model name my debug settings so for optimization well, let me skip the optimization for now for simplicity and this is my torch constants constants are optional i can actually compile model without uh, providing particular weights and biases uh, let me step into that so that's the a template compiler compile model function uh, that what it takes output tensor target work dear test name is just a subfolder uh, profiles so that's related to profiles uh, strategy for profiling is going to be max uh, so let me see it supports mean max and hints uh, so it relates to the shape of my input Tensor. So if I say max is going to use maximum size of the batch size. All right. So name, uh, number of runtimes. It's actually it's now one. It uh, tells me uh, number of simultaneous inferences which can be done with the model. Profile dir. So constants. Yes, we supply them. Allocator kind, it's another enum. Uh, so the difference between default and tracking that uh, tracking is usually used uh, during testing. It tracks uh, 
the amount of memory which it allocates and default, I don't think it tracks it. So debug settings, yes, we provide it and do optimize graph is just false for now. All right. Uh, recompile, yes. So test name is just a directory name. What's next? Uh, okay, now we're going to dump our EAT graph called tensor. Uh, I think it's output tensor here too. Yeah, tensor is output tensor uh, to the Python program with particular debug settings. Uh, so dump program. It, it dumps a T sorted graph to executable Python code. It's again, it's for debugging. It will not execute the model itself. It just execute the metadata of the model. Uh, so we do some transformations here, which is top of sort. It's, uh, it's a required transformation. They usually do it. Yeah. It just organize the uh, nodes of the graph internally. Mark param tensor is another transformation which set is param to parameters. Name graph, it just gives uh, correct names uh, to the elements of the graph. Okay, so it's again something related to naming here. Uh, we can skip it to the template. Uh, so internally, uh, they quite often they use templates. So it looks like that. It's change a template uh, to generate the program code. They use templates quite often for Python and for CUDA code. All right. So now we're just going to generate our AIT program and dump it to file. So we're done with that. Let me show you that. Mm. So that's the program you should generate it. So it inherits from a T basic program. It defines again that I have input tensor weights and biases. Some infrastructure methods get against get constants, get inputs. And then the model is actually what executes the model. Uh, so basically what it's doing, it converts my model, which is defined here. Uh, and this model is using layers. Uh, so it converts it into particular operators, which are going to be executed with the particular inputs. Uh, that's basically uh, uh, the only reason why we have it. We can execute it, but it's going just to run that. Okay, let's return back. Okay, now we're going through uh, the transformations for the graph. Uh, prepare that for optimization, then the optimization itself. Uh, so with target, I, I remind you that target is CUDA uh, architecture 7.5. So it supports enter and exit methods. This is why we can use it with, with construction. Uh, again, we're doing top of sort, and uh, because we're doing it in debug mode, uh, after each transformation, we can actually dump the graph to text, JSON, and HTML file, uh, and we can just look what's going on. So uh, here is going to be the folder which we should get everything. Uh, for some reason, it don't have, it doesn't have to refresh. Uh, all right, so this is my model, and uh, after the top of sort, uh, we have uh, information about our graph in JSON format. So we have tensors and operators. It's X, FC0 weights, 
biases and output. And the only operator which we have is uh, JMRCR bias. We can also have this info in text and we also have it in HTML. So that's how it looks in HTML. Graph visualization. Uh, you can click on it to get some additional attributes. Like what's my shape is, is it input or output or is it params? And if you click on operator, it gives you additional attributes of the operator. Uh, that's the name of the particular op which is going to be used for code generation. Okay, so let me get back to where we are. So we did top of sort, next step is to do some validation for the tensors. Uh, the next step is to bind constants. Since we provide the constants, they can be binded. So that bind constants. Mm, okay. Internally, it just calls uh, uh, bind data for the tensor. And from the constants, we get particular uh, container which contains our constants. Uh, okay, I think we can skip that granular details for now. So bind constant in, is done. Uh, again, we dump the graph after that transformation. Then we have remove unused ops, dump it. Remove no ops, dump the graph. Name the graph. It's again related to naming of the elements of the graph. Uh, dedupe symbolic name, uh, mark parameter tensors. Uh, let me see if we have any additional changes in the graph after that step, mark parameter tensors. Now that visualization is pretty nice actually. Yeah, it's still the same stuff. I think the only difference no, it's still the same. So params and inputs stay different, yeah. So is params true here? Right. So the next step is to do the optimize graph. And remember, like we disable optimization. So do optimize graph is false in our case, but uh, it still will do some optimizations. So that method is doing optimize graph and it explains what particular optimization it can do, like fusing, uh, transform alignment. And here is the full list of the optimizations, which we normally do in AAT, but because we're not optimizing, it gives us just a subset of that, just a required optimization. Uh, So that's what it's going to do. So we have the functions which we want to apply to our graph and then we just apply them in loop. So after each transformation, we're going to dump uh, transformed graph with the name, like ID of transformation and function name. Uh, okay, let me, let me just do it. So the transformations are done. We should see lots of new HTML files. And I think this one is interesting, apply padding graph. Let me show you how the graph is transformed now. I feel like it looks slightly different than before. Now we have this concatenate operations and what they're doing is uh, changing the input shape. So see like the, my input tensor, it has the last dimension is three and for NVIDIA devices, it should be 
aligned by two. So we have additional tensor where the last dimension is one, we can concatenate it, and the resulting tensor is it has the last di dimension of four. And that's what is required for NVIDIA. And we're doing similar stuff for weights. So the original shape is three, three, after concatenation is three, four. And that modified inputs and weights, they're going to gemma RCR bias. And for bias, we don't need to change anything, it looks like. And the output shape is still, uh, it still has last dimension as three. All right. Uh, so we're done with the optimization transformations. Uh, so we dumped it again, but it's basically will be equal to the last transformation which we have here. Uh, mark special views, refine graph. Um, then again, dump that refined graph. I haven't noticed any changes for my particular graph after that too. Okay, now we're going to do profiling. Uh, so profiling, it basically selects which particular schedule or particular operator is the best on the particular device. Uh, first, we just to decide uh, which particular device we're going to use. Um, it's just getting uh, info about good visible devices. So in my case, it will be just zero, device zero. And then we will do profile. So for profiling, we supply the graph, which is a list of tensors, uh, profile dir, profile device, which is just zero. And uh, strategy is max. Uh, I just want to remind you, it's it will use maximum batch size for profiling, which is eight in my case. Okay, so this is our profile. So first we need to generate the code for profiling. Uh, so we do gen profile. So now we're getting to backend code gen. Gen profile code. So for particular nodes inside our graph, we're going to call that gen profile function. Yeah, so what is that linear combination? Okay, uh, let me step into that. So now we inside gem common, gen profile. Uh, so that method, that function is going to generate a profiler code for us, I believe. Function, and yeah, gemrcr config. All right. Yeah. Okay, should build profile. Interesting. Let me get to that. So build profile is yes. So we're going to build it. It's going to gemrcr bias gen profile. Euler. So we get that function and file name. So that's going to be uh, the file name for profiler program. And then Okay, now I am inside gen profile for this particular operator, gmrcr bias. And it's going to call common gen profile from the base class with its particular parameters. I guess uh, that's the template for bias. Yeah, because the only difference between that guy and the bias is that, and, uh, and the gmrcr bias is that it has bias and the base class it doesn't. So this is why it needs this additional template for bias. Okay. 
Okay, now we're inside John Marciar. Again, profiler. And just curious, where's this template? Source template, yeah, that's probably it. Yeah, basically, like uh, uh, this code generation that generates the profiler program. Now let me just start exiting from that. Okay. So we're done with the code generation, I believe. Uh, let me see if we actually have some files. And we still not have them. Yeah, okay. So the profiler program is here. I can I can just get into that and do some clank format for that so it's easy to read it. Uh, so that profiler program. Uh, first, what it's doing, it defines uh, particular schedules for the gem. So that's one of the example. So it's using internally gem universal with the particular parameters. So it generate particular class which maps to the gem universal generic class with the particular parameters. And it's keep doing that uh, with other parameters. So, okay, this first one is going to be associated with gem instance zero. Then we have another one. So that guy is going to be associated with gem instance one and so on. I think total we have eight of them here. Actually nine, I think, yeah. And then we have benchmark gem. So it contains warm up phase and then the actual benchmark. And what else? And then we have main main method, which just executes all of that stuff uh, and dumps to the database. Okay, let me return. So we got the idea how this profiler program looks like. So the generation phase is done. So we're still inside uh, uh, profile method. Uh, and so we're also going to create a builder because now we need to build that program to executable. And so we have a builder and then we call make profilers. Just basically to use it internally, it's using NVCC to build it. Um, yeah, it's such as assemble. The command, I guess. Yeah, there is a command and then run my command. It's pretty obvious. So it takes some time. So it's making the this uh, profiler program. It should not take long. Okay, that's done. Uh, let me refresh again. So now we have this binary file without any extension. It's our compiled uh, profiler program. Uh, okay, and what we're we going to do next? Yeah, now we're going to execute the profilers. Uh, for some reason, it needs to split them to gem profiler programs and non gems. Uh, there is slightly different execution uh, workflow for them. Uh, so, profiler. Yeah, for gems, so I guess we just have just one here. 
and it's executed. Uh, also, the result is written to the database the using uh, well, what is uh, SQLite? Yeah, SQLite database. So the uh, in uh, home directory dot AI templates we have the CUDA DB, which is SQLite database, and the results of the profiling will be written into that table. Yeah, and that's what it's doing. So we have gem insert template. It's basically a SQL which inserts it's inserts the record. I guess we can just get there. And yeah, I think we're done with profiling. I can show you the record in database later. Uh, for some reason, they don't commit the record until the compilation is done. So for now, if we get uh, uh, to the database, we will just see empty table. Uh, is that? Yes, yeah, it's, it's just empty for now. So they didn't commit for some reason. Just done with profiling. After profiling, they dump the graph again, but I, I think I don't think they make any changes to the graph itself here. What's next? Uh, next step is to do constant folding. Um, so that constant folding can starts giving us uh, files which we're going to build next. Um, we'll see. So that constant folding transformation. Yeah, basically the idea that it starts returning some files which are needed for constant folding uh, process during the model execution. Okay, where are we? I am in gen function. Yeah, so it's trying to gen some functions for me. Functions. Oh, I can actually see like what's going to be my first file. So the file is going to be concatenate constant folding. Okay, so we're going to generate uh, the program for concatenate constant folding, which is using during the model execution. Uh, so the idea is similar. Uh, you get particular function from the graph, and the functions, they know how to generate code for themselves. That's what is going to be executed and written to a file, uh, this file. And later, all of that file will be built together into model shared, fold, uh, shared library. So where inside concatenate fast, they have particular kernel source template. It's again some Jinja template. Uh, some of the lines are parameterized they accept arrays or particular values to generate the code mm, exact path source to play render yeah that's basically how the code generation is working in ai templates i guess this is why they call it templates okay let me exit from that um, yeah, and basically that continues, so then, yeah, it's done. Uh, so now we have file pairs. Mm -hmm. It draws me to you anyway. So it's for constant folding. Yeah. Um, constant generator, so we're still inside. Constant folding.
Yeah, I guess we need some additional files, which I'm going to use. H files. And then some. Some additional stuff is also needed. Let me just skip to that. Okay, we have new constants, file pairs. So it's my CU program object. Yeah, just that constant folding inputs. Okay, replace ops with their folder values, folded values. Yeah, so there's some logic here. And basically, it returns me sanitized sorted graph, file pairs, and constant folding inputs. That's okay. And we dump the graph again. Let's look at the graph. So it's constant folding. Yeah, there is some difference. I guess uh, the parameters was just folded. So this is why we don't have this inputs before them. Um, so that's the difference between the graph before and after constant constant folding. Okay. So the next one is transform memory planning. I guess some memory optimization, some verification, a mark isolated in towards dump again. Uh, so okay, now I guess it's uh, again function source. Yeah, so this is more related. This is related to uh, the actual source generation. Let me see. So we get inside the cont again. Oh, let me skip to that. Oh, my first concatenate. Okay, next one. So that's about concatenate. I'm not that interested. Okay, the next is going to be yeah, gem. So the next is gem. It's more interesting. So again, we have source pass for that file, gemrcr bias. Three CU object, then the function is going to give us the actual code. So we have gem common gen function. Uh, then we get the actual function with this particular key. And then we ask that function to generate the code the actual code for the model, not for profiling. Again, it's going to call common gen function with the particular templates to generate the code for that. Let me exit from that. So now we have a bunch of files, I believe. No, oh, just two actually. And catenate and gemrcr bias. So it's all needed for the model execution, for the model generation. Uh, what's next? So that file uh, file pairs, which we just got, we actually uh, concatenate together with uh, uh, constant folding files. So we start to get more and more CUDA files, which we're going to build next. Uh, okay, so some additional stuff. We'll get for the graph. Uh, new output tensor dictionary. So I guess it's just some auxiliary stuff which is needed 
the graph optimization and this guy is going to uh, generate some additional files which are needed. They call it main pairs, basically some infrastructure for files. And I guess we can just skip through that. And so main pairs, they're quite big, it's seven files. Yes, some utility, model interface, standalone, model container. Yeah, some common auxiliary files which are still needed. So again, we combine all of that uh, CUDA files together. Then we get the builder and then we're just going to build them. It takes some time, probably one minute at least, uh, to build uh, to build all of that files. Let me see. It's actually generating make file internally. Uh, and then it lists all of that uh, object files here. It tells that CUDA files should be converted to object using that command and VCC with a bunch of parameters, bunch of in, uh, a bunch of includes for the header files. And yeah. They use lots of stuff from uh, Kutlas, including examples, actually. So some of the examples, example folders included too. That's interesting. And this is my model SO. It basically combines object files together to the shared library standalone. And so that my model is going to be that um, executable application which just runs the model with some dummy inputs it's for performance testing it's optional yeah uh, let me see if it's still building oh, actually it's done so we have some logger and four we exit from target and so this is our output I let the final so file and some additional info was printed before. Yeah. And so one uh, because we're done with the compilation, we can actually look at the um, at the database now. So now it shows me one record. And this is the scheme of the table. Uh, well, I guess it's not very well visualized, but basically uh, there are a bunch of fields inside the profiler database, and that's the, how the data looks like. Uh, so it has particular parameters like M, N, and K, and for that parameters, so it looks like a batch size. This is the kernel size. That's aligned kernel size. Function name and bunch of D type major ABC duration and other stuff. So that's the result of profiling, and it also, I guess, recommends to use this guy to run this operator on this particular device. Okay, what's next? Yeah, so once the compilation is done, uh, the compile model is going to give me model which is basically uh, my model is so this generated file I can show you yeah that's here the number of runtimes which is one it's uh, how many inferences can run consequently uh, in parallel it's just one allocator kind is none And so we also attach the graph to that model and return it. So the compilation is done. Uh, I'm going to close that model and just to create my own from scratch. Uh, so I'm, I'm giving to the model the leap pass, which is my model is so. And I can actually go and execute the model or alternatively I can uh, 
set new weights and biases if I want. So I don't need to recompile the model if I just need to change weights and biases. So I can set them after the compilation. So I prepared the dictionary which contains my weights and biases and called it set many constants method of the model. Called constants is also needed and the model is ready now. So I choose to use batch four. It's in the range from one to eight, it's okay. Uh, so I create my NumPy uh, data. Then I'm going to convert NumPy to AIT data. What's that? No, that's the, my output shape. And number of bytes in the output. And I'm going to allocate that number of bytes for my output. M2 allocated AT data. Okay, I guess I just need to call that internal method. Oh, I know why, because uh, I give the, the pointer to the model so it remembers all the allocated data and it will automatically clean them after the model is closed. Um, and then uh, I'm going to create AT data. Uh, that's the placeholder for the output data. So it can it has a pointer shape and the type. So I just get inputs and outputs in form of dictionary. I'm just printing them. Let's see for some reason. Ah, it's here. So I have the pointer shape and the type for my input and output. Uh, so input, it, it has some data at that point or output, it doesn't, it's just some garbage now. And then I'm going to run the model with my inputs and outputs. So internally it executes the model using runtime. And uh, once it's done, I can convert AAT data to NumPy and print it. So yeah, this is the result. Uh, the model execution and model close.